welcome to Basic Hand Lettering. My name is Jez. I am the Adult and Teen Programming Coordinator at the library, and today I'm going to show you some basics. First, we're going to go over our supplies. So I have here a sketchbook, but you can use any kind of paper for this. You can use just plain printer paper, you can use some cardstock or scrapbooking paper. Uh, you can also use envelopes or index cards, whatever you want to decorate. It's entirely up to you. There are a lot of different tools that you can use for hand lettering. Uh, I personally am partial to brush lettering with, uh, with brush pens, but there are a few different things you can do and we'll go over how to use each one. First is just a basic pencil if you want to sketch out anything beforehand. We also have a few different kinds of pens. There are some specific hand lettering pens. So here I have a very fine point pen. It's kind of just a thin line. I have a marker, it's a 1.5 that has kind of a more rounded tip. Uh, it's just a paint marker, it's similar to most markers that you have lying around. It's just a little bit thicker. And then we have the brush pen. So it looks kind of like this. Uh, it's got a longer tip. And the thing about that tip is that a brush pen works very similar to a paintbrush. This is different than a paintbrush pen, which is actually holding it and working like a paintbrush. Now I'm using a hard tip brush pen, which is different than a soft one. A soft tip brush pen is going to work a lot more like a paintbrush, whereas the hard tip you can use in two different ways. If you use it straight up and down, you can get a thin line. If you use it on its side and push down, you can get a much thicker line. So it works in both directions, um, very similar to a paintbrush, but a little bit more sturdy and easy to control. And that's what I'm mostly going to be using today, but I'm going to show you different ways to get the same effects of lettering, even if you don't have these special tools. So if you have brush pens, great. Um, I have this pack. You can also just use Sharpies. This is a um, ultra fine point Sharpie, so very similar to, to the fine point pen that I've got here. I also have some highlighters just to add some color. If you don't have brush pens, you can actually get the same effect just using some basic markers that you have you know, at home or in your kid's craft kit. Um, those have those very triangular those have a very conical tops where they have a uh, point at the top and it's longer on the sides. You can get the same effect just by turning it on its side. You can get that longer, thicker brush stroke. So the most basic part of brush lettering is just how you hold your pen. So if you hold it kind of straight up, you're gonna get a different effect than if you hold it on its side. Uh, so if I hold it straight up like that, on its side, it gives you a much wider stroke. It's also a matter of pressure. When you're going up, you're going to use a very light pressure. When you go down, it's a harder pressure so that when you push it down, you're pushing down the longer part of the tip and kind of bending it. You can do all kinds of different alphabets and letter effects using these pens or just your regular markers or even just a pencil. The most basic tenant of brush hand lettering is that you use a light, thin line when you go up and you use a heavier, thicker line coming down. So for example, you can try writing just your alphabet the same way you would normally, but with those strokes. So if you were to go up, it's lighter, come down, heavier, and it's also light across. Same thing, go down, across, and down. It's going to get thicker. 
over and down, it's going to get thicker. Light going up, thicker coming down, light going up. You can actually just practice this through letters to see how you write the different ones and you can figure out where those effects go. So if I were to continue this alphabet, be very thick down, I'm gonna start out light and I'm gonna push harder down to get that thicker side. It's very light on the side here. Now, what you might notice is that I'm picking up my pen after each individual stroke. Uh, you'll see a lot of very professional hand lettering artists who can do this automatically as they're writing and just continue a whole word. But the best way to do it is actually to do each stroke on its own. So I would go down, down, and across. Another way you can get the same effect without a brush pen is to just write your alphabet as you would. And notice when you're going down or when you're going up, you'll draw an extra line next to any downstroke. So I'll draw a line here. And I'll draw a line here. And then you just kind of connect those and color it in. The more fine tip your point, the longer it'll take to color in, but you can use other markers, you can use highlighters, or just put some time into it. So again, if I'm going down, around. So here I would draw a second line on the inside. I'll do the same thing here. Now when you start, it, it's kind of thin, so I'll start very close to it and get thicker as I go around to where that broad stroke would be. And then I can color that in. You wanna kinda of go with the same direction as the letter. So I wouldn't make a straight line down for C. In this example, there are other you know, alphabet styles that you might want to do that in as an effect, but you may not even color those in. Another way I might do that one, if I did want to go just straight down, that creates a different typeface, different effect. But that is also a form of hand lettering. So you can do a lot without the official tools of the trade. There's most effects you can replicate if you're willing to just put in a little bit extra time. You can do the same thing with um, some curlier edges. If you want to use some cursive, there are lots of different effects you can use here. So just with my regular handwriting here, I actually go up on my A before I come down. So here I would just do the side. Down. Do it extra there. You can also leave it uncolored. So it just has these outlines. That's also a very nice effect. And you can change the width of these. So maybe I want a really big downstroke here on either side. So when I color it in, when I color it in, it's a much thicker, more bold letter. Another trick you can use is to use a highlighter. Now I have a chisel tip, which is perfect for this because we can use that point at the top for our thin lines, and we can use it on its side for the thicker lines. So it essentially has the same effect as the brush tips, although it's not as flexible. So 
if I were using this, I could write my letters same as I might normally. And if I hold the pen a specific way, you'll actually still get that same effect because it's thinner when I hold it this way than it is this way. So when I go down or up, it's straight. When I go around, it's different. It's the same effect, but it doesn't have that same strict thin up, thick down rule. But it's just another way to get that. Once you have the basics of your letters, you can then trace the outlines and get another effect. You can kind of choose how far you want to go in. So I could stop on the outside of the B here, or I could actually trace it all the way in the same way that my brush stroke would go. Now, my lines don't exactly line up with the highlighter. You can fill those in, or you can actually do it this way just for a different effect also have them overlap where your highlighter lines would overlap. So just different ways to get that same effect. If I wanted to do some hand lettering that was closer to traditional calligraphy, you, know, you can do that. Again, just be careful with the way you move your hand, where you hold your pen, especially the amount of pressure you use. So when you go up, you want to use very light pressure. You come down, you're going to push down on that pen a lot more. And you can do this in more script-like writing. So I could push down, go up, push down, go up, like this. Or you can pick up your pen in between each brush stroke. You get a more consistent effect that way. I'm going to go down. Bring it around the side here. I'm going to change the way I hold my pen so I can get different pressure. Go up, down. I'm going to push down much harder on my pen. And then I can just kind of do a little flick there. You can get very much the same effect um, as you go connecting letters. Picking up your pen in between is going to be very helpful because sometimes it's hard to transition from the different levels of pressure. Sometimes you may not even want the difference in thickness and you just wanna go with a basic line, it's called a mono line, but you just wanna make it a little bit more fun. You might wanna use some loops, play with your height. So you can go very far up or very far down below your basic line Maybe all of them don't connect. Secondly, but sometimes when you go down much farther, you want to just continue the next letter without having them connect. And with this same script, you can do the effect that we did earlier where you draw them in. Okay, draw around here. I actually did that on the wrong side because I actually went up on that. But you can also play with that and just always have them on one side of the letter. So instead of having it go with the brush strokes, I'm just always going to fill in on the right side and give it more of a shadow effect. When you're ready to start lettering, especially if you're a beginner, the best tool you have is your pencil. You can write it out. Ahead of time, so you have your guidelines. You can also draw on these. So again, we're gonna go thicker on the downstrokes.
and then you can mark that in with your ink to go over it. This gives you a chance to erase any mistakes or to get a general outline. You can also use a ruler or one of these guidelines for hand lettering. So you have all of your letters the same height. You can either write it with the guidelines here or you can trace the guidelines in pencil and you can even trace that middle line so you know where that is and then write your words within this so you have guidelines but that you can easily erase later so you have all of your letters the same height or even width if you want to use those guidelines but you don't have to see the lines around them. They also make these for curved letters. So here you could trace them or again you could just draw within these but I would tape it down to do that so it's not moving around like you see mine is. A great way to get some good hand lettering is to mix different effects. So you can mix bold sans serif fonts with more flowy, bouncy fonts. You can put a brush font with a very skinny, taller font. There's lots of combinations you can do here. It looks better than just having all of the words or letters the same thing. Some fun effects that you can add to letters are to put a serif on them. So that is just the little feet that you sometimes see on letters, like with Times New Roman. So you can do this with a skinny font like I'm doing. Or with a bolder marker. You can also do some 3D effects. And again, I recommend using a pencil so you can draw out. I'm just using basic block letters here. And then you can trace around the outside. You can either trace the lines all the way around or I like to put these diagonal lines in first at any corner and then you just draw straight lines between them. I have to come around the side here. Do the same thing at the beginning of the three. Oops. You just have to make sure you always draw them on the right on the same side of the letter. Here in this case I'm doing the right side so that you're looking at it at an angle and it's not, so it looks like it's going all the same way. And try to keep the length of those corner lines the same place. Also looks nice if you're just adding lines on the inside. Just kind of gives a little bit more character to them. A nice effect that I like is going back to some letters that are already finished and adding that kind of shadow 3D effect with a different color pen. So here I'm going to use my silver pen. Just kind of go in around here and again just do it all on the same side. So here I'm going to do the right again. Just trace on the right side of any of your letters. Kind of gives a nice 3D effect there as well. Plus you get a little bit more character with the other color and in this case it's a metallic color as well. Like I mentioned, um, hand lettering is 
even though it's handwriting in a way, it's more drawing than anything. So don't be afraid to use some drawing or shapes in this. So you could put each letter in a circle. You can do the same thing with hearts. Or any other shape. You can also play with patterns. So here I'm going to have a large uh, outer downstroke that's going to be a little bit thicker. And go across and I'm going to do that on most of my letters. Just kind of draw your letters and then put in the line or you can do that first. Here I'm just going to do the line straight down. You can do it first by putting in that line and then drawing the rest of it. And then you can use different patterns to fill in those spaces. So maybe I want to use a bunch of straight lines across. Or maybe I want to use some circles in there. And then I could even color in extra spaces. Now the best way to get ideas is just to play around with it or do search on Google or especially Pinterest for hand lettering designs or do a search for easy to draw fonts. I'm just going to flip through some of my old bullet journals to show you a couple of designs that I've used. So here is where you can incorporate some of those shapes and in this case I did hearts in the letters instead of around them. Here I played with a mix of serifs, so not only the lined feet ones, but I also have some um, circles at the end here, and also played with the thicker and thin things. Same as we mentioned before, the upstroke is thin, the thicker ones are down. It's just a little bit different than some brush lettering. And here's an example of how I used those circles inside the letters, uh, this case to look like Broadway lights, and I've got some red in there. Uh, here's an example of using those extra lines in there. In this case, I did not color them in, uh, but you can see that here I put all of them on the right side, which means some of my letters, like the A's here, are tilted to the right as well. Uh, here I mixed in some little dots, so similar to adding shapes. I've got them, uh, I have three in every letter. And here's playing with some color that you could actually do multiple lines if you wanted a nice gradient. You could have a line across the top, as many colors as you want going down. Here I have that 3D effect with the designs in it, but the difference here is that I didn't put a center to any of these letters that adds a very different effect. And here instead of Filling in those lines, I added an extra line to each of them the down, in the downstrokes, which shows another fun effect. Um, you can also play with mixing capital letters and lowercase letters, but keeping them all the same height. And one of the most simple designs, but very cute, is just adding a little dot at the end or on the corners of every letter. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some good ideas. These are all very basic tips, but it will definitely get you started on hand lettering, especially brush lettering. And I hope you keep looking and keep practicing. Have a great day.